So I mentioned that in pre-calc book, we start in chapter P. Um, somewhere in there, probably calls it the prerequisite chapter. Okay. A lot of this stuff will be familiar, although there will probably also be a few new bits and pieces or just things that maybe we've barely done anything with. Okay. So that's kind of the direction we're going. We're going to start with some good old definitions. Okay. This first set, you know all these vocabulary words, but do you remember them? That's where I'm guessing the, you know, slight catch is going to be. So just various types of number systems. Real numbers. Thoughts? Uh, just anything. Anything. They're positive. No. Just anything. 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 Except what? Irrational numbers. No, irrational falls into real. Fractional. Fractions. Fractions are real. Zero. Zero is real. <laughs> They're real. There's no exception. This is a trick question. So in Algebra 2, <laughs> prior to Algebra 2, everything was a real number in your life. In Algebra 2, we learn that there is also something called... Imaginary numbers. Imaginary Heck numbers. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Let's okay. Let's get it. So... Uh, but basically, everything we deal with, with the exception of imaginary numbers, are real. Okay. In my notes, I have the definition of any number that can be written as a decimal, because everything can be written as a decimal. Fractions can be turned into decimals, positives, negatives, everything can be written as a decimal. So that's the definition I have. And I'm going to tell you right here, guys, all these other definitions we're getting ready to do, they're all real numbers. So real numbers includes all of these categories below. Okay? So I'm going to say any number, and I'm going to use the number sign, that can be written as a decimal. Okay? That's going to be my basic definition. Um, if you want to throw on here, includes everything below. You guys are familiar with the number sign that I used, right? Okay, rational numbers. What do you remember about rational numbers? Anything that doesn't, or anything that repeats or ends. Okay, so anything that repeats or ends, so any decimals that, that repeat fraction. or end. Specifically, we use the definition anything that can be expressed as a fraction or ratio. Okay, so I tend to say anything that can be expressed as a fraction. Your official definition you would see is any number that can be expressed as a ratio just because that's the official mathematical way to put it. So I'm going to say a number that can be expressed as, you can either say fraction or ratio. Okay. So, for example, you usually see it written as A over B, where B cannot equal 0, and B can't equal 0 because we know a denominator cannot be 0. Okay. Integers. What do you remember about integers? Positive or negative whole numbers. Okay. Now, officially, we haven't defined a whole number yet, have we? But we all know what a whole number is, right? So, positive or negative whole numbers. Traditionally, when I write this, I don't even necessarily write words, but I'll do dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. 
Okay. If you want to use the words any positive or negative whole number, you can. Okay. That would be a good way to put in words. But if you just want to write your list of examples out, that works as well. Okay. So those are your integers. What about natural numbers? They're real numbers. More specific than just real numbers. There's a soul in the, it's like everything except zero. All positives except okay. positives except zero. Be a little more specific than everything except zero or all positives except all, zero. All numbers besides zero. Okay. So, how did you count in kindergarten? One, two, three, four, five. We start at one and you went with whole numbers, yes? Yeah. So these, uh, there's, these are also sometimes called your counting numbers. But basically, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so forth. So I am going to write down counting because if you're ever asked about counting numbers, that is another word name for natural numbers. But yeah, starting at one, two, three, four, five, however far you want to list. Okay, so natural numbers, just think your kindergarten numbers, preschool numbers. Okay, what about whole numbers then? What does whole numbers add in? Zero. Zero. Okay, so whole numbers, you know, whole numbers, no decimal pieces, no fractional pieces, just whole numbers, but they do include zero. And whole numbers are only positive. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. Can you just put like positive integers? Uh, positive integers plus 0. Because I, mean, I, I would say... 0 is positive. I would say 0 is neither negative nor positive, personally. But as long as you know 0 is included. Okay. And our last real number category we're going to talk about, irrational numbers. They're not rational. Okay. Anything that's not rational. Meaning they can't be expressed as a fraction or ratio. Okay. They can't be expressed as a fraction. They, What's that look like if they can't be expressed as a fraction? They add, like they don't end and they don't repeat. Okay. So I refer to them as the big, long, messy decimals. Yeah. Okay. They do not end, they do not repeat. They go on forever, but they're not repeating. What's our favorite example of irrational numbers? Pi, right? Okay, so pi is our number one example of irrational. What else could we use as an example of irrational? There's another type of number that we often talk about. They give us big, long, messy decimals. Think in terms of square roots. Oh. What's the square root of 5? Some big, long, messy, yeah. irrational number. Two okay. Point. Exactly. 2 point something, past that, we got that. So you could write this as any number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. You could write that. Um, I tend to say they are the decimals that do not end and do not repeat. However you want to express this. You want to put some examples down here. Pi. Square root of 5 is what I said. Any square root is going to be irrational that's not a perfect square. Okay, so square roots are either perfect squares where you can take it and get a whole number, um, or you, you, know, you can take the square root, or they are irrational. Okay, decimal types. We've got two decimal types we're going to talk about. These are more obvious, I think. Terminating decimals and repeating decimals. What's a terminating decimal? Like 0.4. Okay. Specifically, it's going to be a decimal that does what? 
A decimal that ends, yes? Okay, so if we're talking about a decimal that terminates, it's a decimal that ends, okay? Now, um, I'm going to use the example, and it's not a decimal form yet, 7 fourths. What do you know about 7 fourths? Okay. It's 1 and 3 fourths, which is 1.75. That's an example of a terminating decimal because it is a decimal that ends. Okay. What about repeating decimals? Okay. Okay. The numbers continue. They continue specifically in a pattern of some sort, right? I don't know if I should use the word pattern, but yes. one third. What do we know about one third? Point three. Point three repeating, right? Okay. So your denominators of threes are always repeating. Denominators of nines are always repeating. Okay. And I'm going to use four elevenths. Denominators of elevenths are repeating. Anyone know what four elevenths is? Let's see. Point three six three six. Did you just know that? Yeah. Okay. Point three six three six three six, so on and so forth. Or how can we write this? Yeah, point three six with the repeating bar above it, right? Okay. Old news, right? It's all stuff you've seen somewhere along the line. It's just a matter of remembering it. It's just a little bit of vocabulary to get us started. Okay. Interval notation is our next thing to talk about. And try to remember. I always forget. I believe we did a little bit of interval notation in Algebra 2. But on the flip side of that, if you tell me that we didn't, I'm not going to argue because I don't remember. So, okay. When we are doing graphing inequalities, and I'm just talking about graphing on a number line, okay? When we are graphing inequalities, so for example, I'm going to use the number line, it's just a number line with A and B at the end. What do we usually use at A and B? Dots. We usually use dots, yes? <laughs> and those dots can be open or closed. What's a closed dot look like? Okay. A closed dot is filled in. Okay. So now this is not interval notation exactly. This is me trying to guide you there. So when we talk about inequalities, we usually talk about a closed interval is one of them. The dots are filled in. What do those filled in dots mean? A is greater than or equal to X, which is greater than or equal to B or C. Okay, so the key is it's the greater than or less than or equal to, right? Now, <coughs> technically, I'm going to use them as less than symbols when we write it. So A, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to B. Keep in mind, A and B are what? A and B are just numbers, right? X is our variable. I'm just using A and B as numbers. That A and B could just as easily be 1 and 3. Fair enough? Okay, and so this is a normal way we write this when the shading is in between. Notice the shading is less than B, correct? It's left of B. And then this guy is backwards, isn't it? If we read it correctly, it'd be X greater than or equal to A. And so that is to the right of A. So remember when we put them together, we put the variable in the middle and we use two less than symbols. Okay equal to means that the dots are filled in. 
Now, I'm going to come back to this here in a moment, but what's the difference with an open interval? Okay, it's not equal to, and the circles are? Open circles, not filled in, right? You've been doing this stuff since middle school. So the difference here is when we write this A, X, and B, instead of using less than or equal to, so we're going to say less than. And this will make more sense once we throw numbers and actual problems in and stuff. Okay. Now, where I always struggle to remember, in Algebra 2, did we talk about instead of using the dots on the end, using parentheses and brackets? No. Oh, you're saying like a bracket can be like less than or equal to and like a parentheses like no. We didn't do it like that. No. Okay. I keep that. thinking that we did this in Algebra 2 somewhere. We did and it I'll have to... parabolas, like the parabolas. Okay, that's where, okay, so when we did domain and range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, this is, okay, there's the connection I need. So we have talked about this a little bit in terms of when we did domain and range. So, okay, so on number line, instead of using the dots, we could use brackets. And when we did this in domain and range, instead of saying A less than or equal to X less than or equal to B, if this shading is between A and B, we did bracket A comma B bracket. And that's, if you recall, saying the shading goes from A to B, and the brackets are like your closed circles, so the brackets are saying that the point is included. This sounds a little familiar, right? Yes. And again, I think it'll make more sense once we put problems and numbers in there. Okay? Yeah, because we did that with the infinities, right? Because zero was always, or infinity was always in yeah. the C. Yeah. Yep. That's, okay. So we did do it. Uh, that's that's the connect my brain needed to make. Okay. So a closed interval uses brackets. An open interval in place uses parentheses. parentheses. So if you have an interval from A to B, and those endpoints are not included, we use parentheses. So it would be parentheses A to B parentheses. Okay. And I think it's on the back side that we do a few examples. And as I said, things will start to make more sense. But Okay, so interval notation is using the parentheses and the brackets. We... In pre-calc, I try and keep us all in interval notation. And that is learning that notation as a, you know, leading to calculus. I know not everyone takes calculus, but it's still a leading into calculus thing and just good math notation there. Okay. Um, in my example, what were my endpoints? Yeah, I use my endpoints as A and B. Those are just, I don't know how else to describe it. They are the endpoints, right? Okay. Um, bounded intervals versus unbounded intervals. Both of these are bounded intervals. They're bounded because what do they have on each end? They stop an endpoint. They have an endpoint on each end and they stop. Okay, so they are bounded intervals. They don't go on forever. They have a bounds. As opposed to an unbounded interval, that's going to be an interval that goes on at least in one direction or both directions maybe, but at least in one direction forever. So when we talk about the bounded interval, that falls any, I'm just going to say any closed or open interval like what we saw above. Those are your bounded ones. Unbounded intervals are the ones that use infinities. Okay, unbounded intervals can either use positive infinity or negative infinity. If something is using positive infinity, that means it's going off to the right infinitely. If something's using negative infinity, that means it's going off to the left infinitely. Okay. Um, for example, I 
describe how do I want to do this. I'm going to do a number line here. I'm going to put A on here. I'm going to put B on here. Okay. Do you remember how to write interval notation here? So first of all, what I did, pause that. I have a number line here. There's A and B on it. We're shaded to the left of A. We're shaded to the right of B. I have a parenthesis at A and a bracket at B. Did everyone catch that? My handwriting wasn't the best, but or my picture drawing. Okay, so where does my shading start? Left to the right. It starts at the far left. What do we use as the far left? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. I used to always say Mr. Stanley's room, yes? Yes. Now it's Mr. Arnold's room. Okay, so this starts at... Negative infinity. It was mentioned earlier that negative infinities always use parenthesis, comma. Where does that shading go to? It goes to point A. That could just easily be a number. And what goes beside A? A parenthesis, because it's not included. Now, we can use the word or in between these. Okay, so I could use the word or in between them, or I could use, remember the U for the union symbol? We used that in algebra 2, didn't I? Yeah. A little bit. This is where I, my brain blurs together. What did I teach in algebra 2 versus what do I teach in pre-calc? So just call me out if I absolutely haven't taught it. Okay, so there's no shading there. Where's my next set of shading starts? We read left to right. The shading starts at B, B with A. Bracket, comma, how far does the shading go? Okay, infinitely. So pause infinity. Infinities always use a parenthesis. I'm ringing some bells, right? Maybe way back in there, but my goal is to ring some bells here. Okay, so um, we will talk as we're going through some examples about some of these and how to use various notation there. But... Interval notation is a big thing. Okay, we'll definitely talk about that, and I'll want, I'll try and steer you away from using our less than greater than signs and to using interval notation for everything. Okay. Questions before I continue. Okay, okay a couple of decimal examples. Okay, determine if the following decimals repeat or terminate after finding the decimal form. Thoughts on 1 16th. What are you doing? What do you know? Okay, so we know in order to take a fraction to a decimal, we're dividing, yes. 1 divided by 16. Okay, so when your calculator does 1 divided by 16, 0 0.0625, and we could divide that by hand if we really wanted to, couldn't we? Okay, we could. And so that is an example of a decimal that terminates. There is no question about that one. It clearly ends. Okay. 55 27ths. Yeah. Why repeating? Is it 2.037037037? Okay, fair enough. And that's what your cal calculator is telling us, this, right? Yes. So if you don't have a calculator at your desk, you can always technically grab one of those up there, but it's just dividing also, isn't it? So 2.037037037 appears to repeat like that. And so we're going to put a repeating bar over all three. And this is an example of a decimal that... Repeats. Okay, C. One seventeenth. What does say repeats? 
because it's very long and we don't know if it continues after the screen cuts off. I second that motion. So we're just guessing at this point? Yeah. I mean, technically it ends on the screen and it doesn't repeat, so you could say it terminates, but... Okay, so... Technically, pi ends on screen, too, so... Yeah, you guys have been around calculators long enough, and you know what I say, okay? If it is... You become used to your calculator. If it is a decimal that fully fills your calculator screen, does it necessarily end there? No. I'm going to assume it probably does not end there, okay? Now... What decimal are we getting? 0 0.0588235290. Okay. Yeah, I got 2.94. I would say Logan's probably ends on a 4 there. Okay, difference in calculators. Okay. Um, did you guys hear repeating there? No. No. But again, what to do after that screen? And keep in mind, what were my choices here? Repeat or terminate. Repeat or terminate. Is there an option for just a big, long, messy decimal that goes on and on? No. Now, okay, so truth be told, it does repeat. How do we prove it repeats? What? Didn't he say repeats earlier? Er, oh, never mind. I thought you were saying like it repeat, like a pattern. Right? That's what I thought you meant when you said truth said it does repeat. Never mind. It is going to repeat. Never mind. How do we prove it repeats? Because it doesn't end. <laughs> But do you see any repeating in what we have yeah, on the screen? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, let me write down, for those of you not looking at calc there, 0 0.588235294 is what the graphing calc there gives you. Okay? Now, here's the deal. It could terminate right there. It could go a little farther and terminate. Or it can keep going and this big, long, messy thing can start repeating. Okay, the proof is long division. We're not doing that today. Notice I don't have room for long division, so you're safe there. But the proof would be long division. Okay, this is one that if we started dividing this out by hand and kept going far enough, it would repeat. Okay, so that's your proof. And that's just kind of one of those tricky ones that you don't necessarily know until you work it out. Okay. So I guess part of what I'm saying is there, just, you know, be aware. Looks can be deceiving. Okay. On the page when you're ready, and we will look at some inequalities. Okay, in this next set, you are asked to describe and graph the interval of real numbers for the inequalities. So two, two uh, expectations here in this particular one. Describe and graph. So describe, put it in words, which means I'm not going to read that problem because I don't want to give you any help on words there, but... What does that expression mean? What do you think, Tyler? That uh, x is smaller than 3. Okay. Less than. Oh, less than. Okay. 3. Smaller than 3, less than 3. Okay. Zero. Different vocabulary, same meaning. Okay. And what does that x represent? Uh, some number. Some number, yes. Okay. So how I have this written is that this expression, x less than 3, represents all real numbers less than three. Okay, so I have this written as real numbers less than three. Now, we're also asked to graph this. So, let's put a number line on here. Okay, it's been a minute. How do we graph this? What kind of numbers do I need on my number line? Integers. Okay. Integers, for example. Right, like two, three, four. Okay. 
two, three, four. I tend to do the number in question, which is three. I tend to do two numbers on either side is what I tend to do, but several numbers, yes? I'm going to tell you right now. Am I going to be okay with just the three on this number line? Yes. No. What? I'm not okay with just the three on this number line. I want to know some numbers around it because if nothing else, I want to know that you know how to order your numbers. I know it sounds silly, but some of you will make mistakes when it comes to negatives. So how about like three numbers? I mean, I could handle if you do something like two, three, four. I can handle that. Okay, but um, now, graphing this. How do I graph this? It would be a circle on three that's not colored in. Then you draw an arrow. You always go the way that it's pointing, so you go that way. Okay, now, I go the way it's pointing as long as the variable comes first. Yeah. Okay, as long as the variable comes first, this is less than, that is going to shade left. Now, I'm not going to use a circle, though. <laughs> oh, she's going to be special with this point. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? Same point. Okay. You have to go home no. with her tonight. <laughs> now, so not circles. We are using the Parentheses and brackets, yes? <laughs> okay. Because you're in pre-calc and we're trying to learn interval notation. That's why you can't use the circle. Okay. So with that in mind, it's a parenthesis as opposed to a bracket because it is open, open not, not equal to. And so and that parenthesis opens with the shading. So since my shading is to the left, the parenthesis is opening to the left. Does that work for you guys? Sounds good to me. Okay. So B, words first. What are the words with that negative 1, that x, and that 4? How can we put this in words? 1 is less than x, and x is less than 4 or equal to 4. Okay. Summarize that. What's that look like? What's that? So, hold on. I got a 1 is less than x, and x is less than x. So, numbers between... Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. One is less than x. Would it be helpful to do the graph first in this it one? It might be. Start with, start with x. Start your sentence with x. Like uh, yeah, x, x is equal, greater than, or, or not greater than, is less than or equal to 4, but greater than negative 1. Negative 1, yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay. x numbers less than or equal to 4. Greater than negative 1, where's that put them? Anywhere in between. Between? Negative 1 and 4. Z. Yeah. yeah it means Z. Does it end up being, between is the word I was kind of looking for there. Does it end up being numbers between negative 1 and 4? Because look, here we have x less than or equal to 4. So that's going to be numbers to the left of 4, or as Logan was saying, less than 4, yes? This one, if you reverse it, that is what? The same as saying x greater than negative 1. And so that is numbers to the right of negative 1. So when we have an expression like this, this is all real numbers between negative 1 and 4. Now, we're going to have to address which endpoints we're including or excluding. But I'm going to say real numbers between negative 1 and 4. What are we doing with negative 1? Are we including or excluding negative 1? Excluding. Negative 1 does not have an equal, so I'm going to say excluding negative 1 and what are we doing with 4? Including, including. It is less than or equal to, so we're going to say including, including 4. Do we have to put the including 4, or can we just put excluding negative 1 and that? You need to specify your endpoints, whether they're including or excluding. And then we need to go back and finish up our graph that I didn't finish. Parentheses on negative 1, and then give me a bracket. 
Okay. No, it's, it's only a bracket equal to. It has an equal to underneath. That's when it's a bracket. Yeah. I got you both. Okay. So when it is just a less than or greater than, no equal to, that is the open circle, or we're going to use parentheses. It's rounded. As opposed to I need to follow equal to, to report to row bracket. one zero one. I'm Alexis Monroe, Weston Enright, Aaron Hoback, Paul Henry, Ruby Ann Taylor, Layla Key, Lillian Stewart, Jonathan Deweese, Mason Yegley, I'm Jason Crater, and Dakota McNally. Thank you. Are these students even in the building yet? Yeah, they're internships. Well, I think so. Oh, okay. Half of them are, half of them are. Because some of those aren't here in the say, morning. JD's not here. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think Paul comes Okay. Here. Yeah. Okay, guys. Questions on that example? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's uh, see if we can work through these next two here. This one, they're giving us the description. So they're giving us the words. <laughs> they're asking us to write an interval of real numbers using an inequality and draw the graph of the following. Okay, so we're being asked to graph this, or we're being asked to write it as an inequality. So, A, the real numbers between negative 4 and negative 5 tenths. Negative 4 less than x less than, or no, sorry, as a, no, yeah, you, either, right? you, less than 0 0.5. I don't know about the equals or not. No, you don't need yeah, to. Yeah, so yeah. Because it doesn't have yeah. like the inequality in x equals. So yeah. So okay. Negative 4 less than x less than negative. Okay. So I was going to start a graph here if you need help with the visual. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. I'm really kind of lopsided. I did that a bit weird because that is a negative 0.5, isn't it? Okay. So real numbers between. Between means just that. So if we're looking on the graph, it is numbers that are between negative 4 and negative 5 tenths, yes? Okay. Learn now. That's kind of like writing example B here, isn't it? If you go back to example B from above, that's the same idea where the X is in the middle. So we're looking at, if I put X in the middle... This is numbers that are less than negative 5 tenths, right? Because it's less than this point right here. And what is it? It's greater than negative 4. But if x is in the middle and negative 4 is on the left, that ends up being a less than symbol, correct? Now, it didn't specify anything about the endpoints. It just says the numbers between. So what would that indicate to you? Those endpoints are not included. If they're not included, what am I going to use on the graph? Okay, it's like open circles or parentheses. For the inequality, we're just using less than signs, right? No equal to. Yes. Okay, B. The real number is greater than or equal to zero. X is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Yeah. So real numbers we're using X, right? So X greater than or equal to zero. Ask us for a graph. So I'm going to put zero on my graph. I'm going to put some numbers around it. And greater than or equal to zero is to the right. What are we putting at zero? This is greater than or equal to. We're going to put a bracket. Okay. <coughs> in my ideal world and brain, we would do these next three, but it's 1101, which means the bell's probably going to ring on me if I'm in the middle of those. So, tomorrow, 
we'll pick up. I'll make your brains kind of go back here and think about interval notation inequalities. Um, we'll talk about some properties. And then there is another page in this one with scientific notation and um, just some exponent properties. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. So this homework. You're welcome to start on some of it if you want. Okay. However, it will not be due till Thursday. So tomorrow we will come in. We'll finish notes and you'll have some work time. Okay. So how would one start on this homework without a book? Well, I kind of thought you'd have iPads by now. So that's a really valid question. Um, pictures of the book. Yeah, it'd be pictures of the book is what it would be. Except you don't have an iPad to take the pictures, so then it's the phone. Which means you're doing it at home. Okay, so in my brain, we're getting iPads during homework today. This is where I'm yeah. thrown off. Okay? Um, Sounds like we just get this one there. <laughs> I mean, here's the deal. Homework's not due tomorrow, so. Um, you can take a picture of a friend's book. I could make copies and get them to you guys later today. I have a book. Huh?